This research project, project involves a water tunnel that can be used for the turbine flow visualization. Please allow me to introduce the water tunnel for turbine flow visual, visualization team. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Robert Dutton. I am the team lead and a mechanical systems major. What the water tunnel team has accomplished is the construction of a water tunnel that allows us to perform flow visualization analysis of turbine blades. We are, we are able to replicate the Reynolds numbers found in an actual turbine using our water tunnel. The 3D flow visualization will be used to model film cooling over the turbine blade. As you know, turbines are limited in their efficiency by the temperature at which they can run. By efficiently cooling the blades through film cooling, we can increase the temperature and increase the efficiency of the turbine. To give you an idea of what we have accomplished in our two short semesters that we've been working on this, this is a water turbine that was built by the United States Navy in 1948. It was done for the equivalent of $800,000 in our, in our, sorry, $800,000 in our money. Uh, don't like microphones. So what we've done is we've replicated essentially their project, which was used for military purposes, for $2,500. By increasing the efficiency, we see a payback time, well, that is frankly infinitesimal because we will be doing this for research, and research is invaluable. All right, I'm going to go over a little bit of what we can actually see from this. Um, the two examples I have up here um, are using uh, electrolysis from uh, a copper wire. You put an electrode through it, um, and you actually get little hydrogen bubbles that go through. Um, the one on the bottom right, that's actually just a really slow-moving flow moving across a cylinder. That's it. And that's how complex the flow field behind it actually looks like. What you don't get from wind tunnels is you, you really can't see that. You can measure the pressure around it, you can find out how much drag it has, how much lift it has, but you really can't see what's going on. And that's what we can see with our water tunnels. We can put either hydrogen bubbles or even more simply, we can put dye in it, just some color ink, and we can actually see what happens behind it. And once you get into a couple more things that are a little bit more complex, like an airfoil, um, this particular one airfoil is already in stall because that's too high of an angle of attack and you actually get much higher drag on this and much lower lift and that's really not what you want to get when you're designing your turbine blades. So this is just two real quick examples on what we can actually see in this and both of these are done at a relatively slow speed. Um, our tunnel actually has the ability to match engine Reynolds numbers for film cooling which means we can model some very high speed flows in this even though our water tunnel is only running at 8 or 9 meters per second. So just looking at that we can actually see what goes on as opposed to just guess, just from the pressure measurements. Um, this actually shows you how much kilowatt hours America is uh, um, consuming in this year. That's the, uh, the Energy Information Administration kind of gave this as an estimate for this year, uh, just extrapolating from the previous 10 years. But that's four trillion kilowatt hours. And if you look at the average cost of 12 to 13 cents, that's over $500 billion. Um, and the reason why I go this, is from this slide right here. You can see from all these different breakdowns on how this power is being generated um, over all the power plants. You've got coal, you've got petroleum, natural gas, nuclear, all this stuff. All that's the power that you gain from that material, but you still have to harness it. And 98% of all the power generation in the United States has some form of turbine harnessing that power. So what we can do is we can test all the designs that you need to put in the compressor stage, the turbine stage, even the combustion chamber. We have the ability to test and look at actually what's happening inside of that. So we'll actually be able to see how to improve what needs to be improved on it and look at it and get some hardcore data on what we can actually see. If we have any questions, we'd be happy to answer you at table 20 when we're done with our speech. And we'd also like to say that two of our team members could not be here today. That would be Robert Civilli and Tim Casey. And we'd like to express our special appreciation to Progress Energy and Dr. Kapat for funding this project and also our advisor, Dr. Goh. Thank you very much.